Hi, welcome to Briones Pickleball. My name is Jordan Briones, and in today's video, we are going to go over nine revolutionary pickleball tips that are going to transform your game. Now, let's jump right in. All right, so if you are coming from the game of tennis or maybe you're coming from a different racket sport, these nine tips are really going to help you out. Let's jump right to the first one. All right, so the number one tip I'm going to give you is the grip. This is the most basic thing, but we need to start here. There's a lot of different grips and players hold their paddles in different ways in this game. I would definitely recommend the continental grip. It looks like this, or we can call it the shaking hands grip. This is the most universal grip because you are going to be confident in hitting forehand and backhand shots without switching your grip at all. This game is really fast, so when we're up here at the non-volley zone and we are taking dinks or we're taking volleys, we want to be in this continental grip. So whether you hang your hand off the paddle a little bit like this or my pinky finger here, some players choke up really, really high like this, that's okay too. As long as you're in continental, you should be good to go. So here we are at the non-volley zone line. I'm in my continental grip. And notice here I can take easily forehands and backhands. Here we'll just dink a little bit. Even if I have to stretch in and reach like that, forehands and backhands are very comfortable for this shot. When you're up at the non-volley zone, you're going to also be getting a lot of volleys. So let's take a few of those. And in this continental grip, I can take backhands like this. And I'm going to take a little bit of forehands too. So even if I have to dig in there and then we'll take some backhands too. So you can see how versatile this grip is up at the non-volley zone line. Make sure you're in that continental grip. All right, so for tip number two, we want to adjust to the ball and we want to adjust to the paddle. All right, the pickleball paddle is unlike a tennis racket or maybe a racquetball racket. So it's gonna respond differently than probably what you're used to, okay? And also this wiffle ball here does not bounce very high. I can drop the ball above my head and you can see it does not come up past my waist. So 99% of the balls you're gonna get in pickleball aren't gonna come up past your waist. They're actually going to be very low. So we have to compensate for that. Make sure when you are getting the ball hit at you, we move to the ball. We move quickly. If it's short, we wanna see that early so that we could be in good position to hit the ball. All right, so here, Katrina's gonna hit me a couple of shots from the non-volley zone. You can see all these shots she's hitting. The ball isn't coming up very high, whether I hit ground strokes or I'm going to hit some sort of drop like that. All right, we want to make sure that we get well prepared for the ball. And why don't you hit me like some shorter ones here? Okay, so if you see a short ball right here, we really got to make sure that we move up to it. Okay, hit me another short one here. Okay, shorter. Up. Okay, a little bit shorter one. There we go. So like that one, you can see there, you really have to move up and get to the ball because if you don't, that ball is gonna drop right in front of you. All right, so along with adjusting to the bounce of the ball, we really need to adjust to the paddle. Remember, I just talked about in the beginning how it doesn't have strings. So in tennis, which I played a lot of, there's a lot of different grips. There's like a Western grip, a semi-Western grip. With these kind of grips, because there's not strings, it's really hard to get the ball over, especially when you're hitting drives and things like that. So from the baseline here, I would recommend either a continental grip or maybe somewhere close to an Eastern grip, something like that for your forehand and backhand. Now, some players do use a semi-Western grip. I think it's a lot harder to get that ball over consistently. That's why I would recommend an Eastern grip for your forehand and backhand drives. All right, so we're gonna show you a couple of drives here. I like to hit an Eastern grip on my forehand and on my backhand, if I'm driving the ball, I'll either be in continental or a little backhand Eastern grip. Okay, here we go. Okay. Just to show you what it would look like in a full Western grip, I'm gonna show you a couple clips here. It went in. 
All right, so I know those examples were a little extreme, but again, with this Western or full Western grip, this paddle face is going to be straight, face straight to the ground. So that's not gonna go over. That's why if you are in a continental or just more of an Eastern, it's a lot easier to get this paddle face more up and down so that you can just stroke and drive the ball. All right, so now we're gonna hop into tip number three and that is shorten your strokes. What strokes? Almost all of them, all right? Coming from a tennis background, we take really big swings, whether we're hitting volleys or ground strokes. And in this game, the ball gets to you a lot quicker because it's a smaller court. And it's really not necessary to have those big swings. So we wanna have more compact strokes here. In tennis, we have these huge, you know, volleys like this starting almost behind your shoulder at times. In this game, the ball moves and travels so fast, we just wanna keep it as short as possible. And the thing that I want you thinking of is how can I get back into a ready position as fast as possible, okay? So we, we can do that by shortening our strokes. All right, so let's take a couple volleys here. Notice here, our strokes are very, very short. My paddle is not coming behind me. All it's doing is staying out in front and I am volleying the ball nice and compact out in front. All right, so that also goes for ground strokes. I remember when I was training in tennis, we did a lot of ground strokes, baseline the baseline, and you will hit ground strokes in this game, but definitely a lot less because there's a lot of net play at the non-volley zone line. So in tennis, we are used to taking these huge loopy back swings, right? And then we finish like this, okay? big backswing on both the forehand and the backhand. We don't have a lot of time. Remember, it's a shorter court and this ball is getting to you faster and the ball doesn't bounce that high. So we don't have time to take huge backswings as the ball is bouncing like a tennis ball, okay? So when these balls are coming back, I would just recommend that you just put your paddle, you know, right by your right hip. So if I'm taking a if I'm taking a forehand drive here, um, if you have a little tiny backswing come up like that, that's totally fine, but we wanna shorten it and make it more compact compared to our tennis stroke. So I'm gonna be in this position, I'm just gonna take it here, then I'm gonna swing through. Same thing with my backhand, if I get backhand here, I'm just gonna drop it to this position so I can be ready to accelerate through the ball. I'm not gonna take this big one like this, okay? So I'm gonna take a couple drives here. Good. Okay. All right, so that was just a little example of a few ground strokes there. But remember, the shorter, the better. After we finish our stroke, we could get back into our ready position a lot quicker. All right, so let's quickly move on to tip number four, and this is the ready position at the net or at the non-volley zone line. In tennis, the first thing that you are taught is a good ready position at the net like this, okay? We have the edge of your racket or paddle facing the camera here so that you can, you know, volley this way or that we can come and volley this way. All right, again, there's a common theme here. The ball's really, really quick and you want to be able to get to as many balls quickly as possible and reset into a good ready position. So the correct ready position for pick a ball is somewhere around, I would say, between your waist and belly button, and we are definitely going to have our paddle around 10 or 11 o'clock if you're a righty, okay? So just like this, again, the reason for that is we are going to be getting a lot of balls straight towards our torso, our body, so when we block balls and volley all the balls in front of us, they're going to be most likely a backhand. If this ball is coming here, and I'm trying to take it as a forehand, it's gonna get a little bit jammed. We have to slide out of the way. So this is why you'll see a lot of players when they get balls toward their, towards their torso, they're taking a lot of balls with their back end. So make sure your ready position is 10 or 11 o'clock right here. And we'll show you a couple volley exchanges to emphasize the backhand ready position. Good. 
All right, so this does get a little bit of getting used to, especially if you're used to this ready position. Remember, it's all about efficiency and quickness. Like I said, you're gonna be getting a lot of balls to this torso chest area. So just put yourself in a little bit on that backhand side and you'll get a lot of more balls back. All right, so now we're gonna hop into tip number five and that is think feet or think down more than pace, all right? In this game, you're going to get a lot of volleys and also high balls that you want to put away and end the point. A lot of times when I started this game, any high ball, I want to hit as hard as I can and I want to hit through the opponent. Okay, you're making it a lot harder on yourself, especially at higher levels. Players are going to get balls back because they have a good ready position like we just talked about and they're just going to block it. So instead of hitting at your opponent, we want to hit down or away or at their feet. Okay, so we're going to show you a couple examples of me getting high ball. I'm going to hit it right to Katrina, but you know, with anyone with relatively good hand-eye, they can just block it back. We'll show you that first. Okay, let's say we're dinking here. Okay, and Katrina lifts one up. Good. Again, because I'm kind of hitting it up here towards her torso area, that is the last place we want to go, especially in higher level play. I'm going to show you one more time here. She's doing a great job of blocking it right here. Let's say she lifts one up here. Okay. Okay, good. Good block there. Okay, so now we're going to show you what to do instead. Again, if we could angle it off the court or just hit it at the shoelaces. If you just could keep the ball down at the feet, maybe not hit it as hard, but angle it down, you're going to have better results in winning that point. Okay, so here we go. We're going to show you here. Take a couple balls here. We got, let me get, see we got a higher ball here. Okay, boom. So again, I don't have to hit it super hard but if I could just keep it to the feet, right? I know these are really high ball examples, but even ones that are a little bit above net level, if we could kind of just shove it down instead of hitting it through with the opponent, we're gonna have better results. Here we go again. Last one here. We're taking the ball. Okay. Again, this is very effective because when you hit the ball down, they have to bring their paddle down. So regardless, even if they get that first one back, what are they doing? They're actually hitting up on the ball, which gives you another ball to put down, okay? So good players, you're gonna notice they do hit the ball hard with pace, but the main thing is location, and they're trying to get it down at the feet. If you can learn this early on, you're gonna become a really good player really quickly. All right, so now we're gonna hop into tip number six, and that is don't be afraid of the non-volley zone. A lot of times when I first started, and I'm sure a lot of you out there, you're volleying the ball and you're stepping in and committing foot faults. I know it could be really scary, but we wanna just get used to this non-volley zone line. So me coming from a tennis background, again, like I said in the beginning of this video, you know, we're used to stepping in on our volleys like this. And one thing that I like to tell players is if you just treat the non-volley zone line like you would treat a tennis net. So, you know, in tennis, you can come really close to the net and volley the ball, but if you end up touching the net or hitting the net, it's a fault. So what I would do is I would just treat this line just like the net. And you know what, we have to get comfortable in hitting our volleys in an open stance without stepping in. This is a little awkward at first if you're used to stepping in on every single ball like this. But again, if we just practice our backhand ready position and keep our sh strokes, our volleys short and compact, we're not gonna have a problem. Here we go. Okay, so I don't have to be stepping in. All I'm doing is keeping everything nice and tight. Trying to find a ball to put down at, at the feet. Here we go. Okay. So on that note, remember the non-volley zone is exactly what it is. You can't volley in it. So as long as the ball has bounced or is going to bounce, there's no problem being in this non-volley zone. That's why you just really have to get over that stepping in. Just get used to hitting balls or hitting volleys outside of the line. Again, let's say if we're dinking here, this is not a violation, right? If I'm in here hitting dinks here, but I'm not taking as a volley, it doesn't really matter. 
it only matters if I am having a foot or a toe in or something like this in the non-volley zone as I'm actually attempting to hit my volley. All right, so now we're gonna hop into tip number seven and that is use the non-volley zone to your advantage. The one thing that I think separates pickleball from tennis and any other sport is this non-volley zone. We get in a lot of fun rallies and long rallies because if you can get the ball into that non-volley zone and drop it fairly low, it's hard for the team to attack. So just remember this, anywhere you are on the court, if you're in trouble, try to just hit a ball descending down into that non-volley zone to get you out of trouble. So again, when I first started, I was trying to bang away, like a lot of tennis players come in, they're trying to hit everything hard, but once you realize you can use this to your advantage by just dropping balls in there, because it forces a low contact, then it makes your game a lot easier. So here we go. So let's say I'm back here. I take a drive or two here, but then I drop it in there. Okay, that was tough. Here we go. Okay, as long as I'm trying to get that ball down, but there we go, just like that. When that ball lands in that non-volley zone, it makes it really tough. So let's say I'm over here in the court or in the mid court here and why don't you send me a shorter ball here. You know, instead of driving this ball, I could just drop it in there. And what that does is it forces a really low ball, okay? So let's say I'm scrambling, I'm on the defense here, high balls here. But if I can just manage to kind of hit one of those into the non-volley zone, it really limits their attacking opportunities at the net and that is what can allow me to come up. All right, so now we're gonna hop into tip number eight and this one you've probably heard before, but seriously, this is a really good thing that you're going to need to learn how to do at some point and that is learn to dink. All right, a lot of players come into the sport, they have good skills, they hit the ball hard, they have a lot of power, but they don't have a soft game, okay? At lower levels, the hard game or power game is very evident because you know players can't handle the pace. But as you progress through higher, higher levels, you're going to have to learn how to dink. And remember, dinking is just hitting the ball softly in the non-volley zone or somewhere around that non-volley zone line. And remember, all we're trying to do is force low contact points. If I could force my opponent to hit up or if I can move them left and right here, move them over there and I can stretch them, we're gonna eventually get a ball that's lifted up a little bit. We have to learn how to dink so that we can slow the game down and we can keep that ball low and out of an attackable range where we don't wanna give our opponents balls up here. All right, so last but not least, let's hop into tip number nine, and that is be a student of the game. One of the things that really made me excel really, really quickly is I would play a lot of different players from different places in different areas, and I would see new shots, creative shots, different game styles, and as you see these different game styles and different shots, make sure that you're building a memory bank so that you know how to handle them or figure out ways to handle them in the future. And then your pickleball IQ will keep increasing and you will be a smarter player over time. Again, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope this video really helped you out. If you follow and really apply these nine tips, I think it's really going to excel you into being a better player quicker. Thanks so much again and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching this video. For exclusive pickleball content from me, check out briannaspickleball.com. For awesome pickleball paddles like this one, make sure to check the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.